Welcome back. We now want to cast a spotlight on the issue of constituency project and the controversy embedded in the process. Since the inception of the idea of constituency projects under uh, the Olusha Gorbassanjo administration, everything about it has been downright controversial. In recent times, lawmakers have been accused of using constituency projects as a front to literally steal money from the coffers of government. Most times, funds uh, allocated for constituency projects simply disappear into thin air while the projects are never executed. And in most of the cases, the project for whom this, I mean, the people now for whom these projects are meant don't even know about the project, so cannot monitor it or even question their lawmakers over it. In fact, in most cases, the constituents don't even set eyes anymore on their lawmakers now after the elections. It is really that bad, but it's a fact. Now, we want to cast a spotlight on one constituency project that we have been investigating in collaboration with Order Paper, an online publication that developed an app called Construct, used in monitoring the performance of constituency projects across the country. The project in question is titled the Kwaku S Dam Project, meant for the construction of an S Dam in a very remote community known as Kwaku in the outskirts of Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital territory. Now, the project was attracted by this man, Angulu Dobi, who represents Kuje Gwagwalada Abaji Kwali Federal Constituency in Nigeria's House of Representatives. It's one of the constituency projects approved in the 2016 federal budget and assigned to the Upper Niger Basin Development Authority under the Ministry of Water Resources for Osam of 150 million naira. And records show that 80% of that sum, which is around 120 million, has been released for the project. We decided to go in search of the project, and this is what we unearthed. Our team effectively begun their journey at Kwaku community from this point, just off the Abuja Lokoja Expressway, some 30 minutes drive away from the Abuja city center. Commercial motorcycles are the only means of transportation to Kwaku. The road is in a terrible shape and sometimes non-existent. The journey was as rough as you can imagine. At intervals, our team had to disembark from the bikes and trek over very marshy terrain. In case you're in doubt, this is actually part of Nigeria's federal capital territory. After hours on the very bad road, our team arrived at Kwaku, a remote, sleepy rural community with a population of around 3,000. There are three reasons why it is very difficult to dictate if a project is either executed or not in a community like this. One, the location of the project is totally off visibility. Now, it took us at least two hours on motorcycle to get to this location. Of course, the road is not motorable at all. And number two, no media house is ever likely to send a reporter here because of the cost, the safety, and the distance. So it is very difficult for a media house to send a reporter to verify either a project is executed or not. And the third reason is because the people have no access to amenities. They have no light, and so they do not have information. They don't even know which project has been allocated to their community and they don't even know the channels by which they can complain either it is executed or not. Led by the locals and the community, the team made its way through thick bush parts to where the constituency project was supposed to be sited. And this is what they found. It's not the Et Dam awarded for 150 million naira. This is a pond the local people constructed in collaboration with Fadama to retain water to assist farmers and boost agriculture in the community. It's nothing to do with the constituency project of their representative, Angulu Dobi, who the leaders of the community say they had not set their eyes on in a long while. In fact, they say our story is news to them. We have never seen him, with, I have, me as a chief, I have never seen him once close of him to come and visit Kwaku since Honorable Angulu has won the election. We have never seen him here. Think about to send someone. No, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. I'm not in picture of anything. They didn't consult us. That is how it is. They didn't consult us. I sit down and arrange anything about the second down. So the big question is, 
Since this is not the Kwaku Earth Dam constituency project captured in the 2016 budget, then where is the project? To find answers, we headed to Nigeria's parliament, otherwise called the National Assembly, to speak with the man who represents Kwaku community in the House of Representatives and in whose name the project is attached, Honorable Angulu Dobi. When I came in 2015, uh, 2016, I had the intention of uh, uh, building a, an air dam at Kwaku in Kuji Area Council, just like you said. The intention was a very good one. And uh, I actually proposed that in my uh, intervention project. But to my greatest... Uh, uh, to the greatest disadvantage, of, I mean, the, the disadvantage to me and the people of Kwaku, what happened was actually that a primary investigation was carried out at the area, and those teams are sent to even go and do the primary investigation, seriously and sincerely complain about the distance from uh, the major road to the site and this was supposed to happen during the rainy season and possibility of moving their equipment to site was uh, a big challenge and immediately they came back and uh, sat with me on the needs to really discuss this and to have the understanding of this office, knowing fully that on their own, they don't have uh, the powers to propose or decide any change without uh, the decision coming from this uh, office. Yeah. Hence, the project was meant for Abuja South. And uh, then look at quickly the needs to change such project to rural water scheme across uh, the same Abuja South Federal constituency. And I did not just start to think of uh, making a change to such a project. I did a letter uh, to uh, the managing director of, Op I mean, Upper Niger River Basin and Rural Development Authority, intimating them on the need to change the project from Arts Dam to a rural water scheme. Okay. And believe you me, if you go to most of these places, in uh, virtually the area councils in Abuja South Federal Constituency benefited from this water scheme. What I did was to spread them across the area councils and there were solar-powered uh, boreholes at that time. Uh, this was actually, what actually happened to the change, or reasons that gave birth to the change of the art dam that was supposed to merge or to be built at Kwaku uh, village. village. The lawmaker's response leaves us surprised. Surprised that he did not do the primary investigation before proposing the project in the first place, but only did so after it had been approved and awarded for construction at Kwaku. It's also a surprise because he, more than anyone else, should have known the Kwaku terrain better. And even though he says he wrote to the agency saddled with the responsibility of executing the project to change it to rural water scheme, the item is still captured in the 2016 budget as Kwaku Earth Dam project. And it also came true that he actually never consulted with the people of Kwaku before even proposing the Earth Dam project in the first place. People were not consulted when I, I took that project to Kwaku. I did it on my own because I know the terrain very well, and I'm part of them. And because I'm not a professional in that line, I felt anything is possible. The intention was 
if we are successfully building at them, they will also encourage the youth uh, across both youth, both the male and female, on irrigation farming. This will actually would give uh, me the, I mean, the distance to really do, I mean, or site such project at Kwaku. But the then my intention is because we are battling and we're struggling to make sure that the problem that has to do with terrain is solved. And how to solve it is to liaise with FCDA to see how they can construct the road from uh, uh, what is the name of this place? Kweita. From Kweita to uh, Kwaku. So, except the road is motorable, is accessible, that one can achieve building and at them, one can also uh, comfortably be able to achieve that aim of reducing job, I mean job employment problem. For someone who says he knows the terrain very well, the question then is why did he have to arrange for a primary investigation after the project had been approved and in fact awarded? And in any case, if the lawmaker had consulted with the people, he sure would have found out that the community had already constructed a similar earth dam for exactly the same purpose by itself with the assistance of Fadama. I also feel that yes, water is a necessity and as such, we should change the project within the water uh, scheme. And as such, that was why you can see that what I did was from the Adam was changed to uh, rural water scheme. And in this case, it was supposed to be Kwaku, but more communities benefited from the water scheme. If more communities benefited from the water scheme, Kwaku did not. The people told us no solar-powered borehole is sited in the community courtesy of Honorable Angolu. Our team even looked around and could not find any. For the purpose of transparency, like you said, you have the mine, when I came in in 2015, we had about four or five uh, solar-powered boreholes. We'll tell you this was for 2015 and in social community. These were for 2016 and in social community. And it also allow you to go and uh, have one or two uh, interactions with the, 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 the people of the village. It's allowed. You want me to go with you, I'll be, I'll be the happiest person to go with you. Not like other, perhaps, politicians who like, who like just point and I will personally go with you. You see how I'm beloved by my people. Well, we had an agreement with Honorable Angulo and indeed fixed a date to go along with him to the supposed communities where the solar-powered boreholes are sited, but he would later delegate it to one of his staff. And on the day we scheduled to go, that staff said he was ill. We're still waiting to get a new date for uh, that visit. Joining me now to discuss more on this uh, investigation is Oke Epia, who is the executive director now of Order Paper, the organization that partnered with us to investigate the Earth Dam constituency project. I also have uh, Libra Sushuma, who is a lawyer, uh, joining us on the program as well. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Okay, Let me start with you, Oke. Okay. I mean, you've seen the report. We did this together as a collaborative effort. Um, listening to uh, Honorable Angulu, what exactly... Uh, would you have to say about what, you know, some of the things he raised today? Thank you, Deji. Uh, let me premise my comments, uh, first of all, uh, with a bit of background. You know, when we conceived and set out to uh, design and deploy Construct Mobile App, uh, my team at Order Paper, we, we looked at all of the things that were wrong with constituency projects, the issues of corruption, the issues of um, non-inclusion and all of that. And we said that, okay, what we need... Uh, it's a civic technology tool that would enable citizen engagement to be able to understand these issues by themselves and be able to, if you like, disrupt some of these issues around corruption, you know, associated with constituency project scheme. So, uh, I mean, it, it's uh, for us a, a sense of, uh, you know, uh, a bit of some fulfillment 
that citizens on their own, you know, because what we did and what the app does, it puts a lot of the information that you need to be able to know what should come to your community. Uh, and in the case of this project, there were quite a number of comments about it Precisely. on the construct Precisely. app, and that's one of the reasons why we decided to do this. Precisely. And, okay, now mm. let's talk about Honorable Angulu, what, what he said. You know, we went to the community, we thought it was an earth down project, that's what is captured in the budget anyway, mm. but got to the community, we did not find the project, and then he says, he decided to change it, basically doing so unilaterally. And it has, uh, from what we understand, uh, you know, with the laws, uh, I, I, I doubt if he has such powers to do that. You know, because it's a budget, it's an appropriation act that has been, you know, it should be implemented as it is. So you no know, one has the authority, I beg to say, to unilaterally, not even the president of the country. I, I, we know that if there is a need to have funds moved around within an appropriation act, a violent request is sent to the National Assembly for that to be done. So in as much as this is captured under that act, I do not think that anyone, not even the president, not even the lawmaker, who has the privilege of having his name flagged on the project, has the right to do so. So it speaks to, again, that sense of lack of inclusiveness, that, you know, if I may also use the word impunity, you know, like arbitrariness. I, I know what my people want. I don't need to speak with them. And quite, uh, you know, uh, shamefully admits that they didn't consult the people. Uh, I, these are the kind of things that we don't want to see continue to happen, you know, when citizens engage with the tool, uh, the construct app. Because not only he has not engaged with his constituents, he has also not shown transparency and accountability from his narrative. You, you can see that by himself. So if citizens saw all of this information we put out there and they flagged this project, which enabled or which stimulated this investigation, and I, it looks like there's still some much more coming from the way you know, the yeah, report has I, I, ended. Absolutely. Libros, I mean, uh, t tell me what you make of um, you know, uh, this whole thing. <laughs> it's laughable. Um, uh, it's, 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 is, it, is it legal? What, what it, that's why I say it's laughable. Um, I, I listened to, fortunately, these are honorable members, I listened to honorable Angulu struggling to convince the reporter that what he did was right. And um, it's like when you box a man to a corner under cross-examination, he had no option but to admit. But uh, we still hold on to the fact that, oh, yes, uh, what we did was right. But legally speaking, what he did was wrong. And which is why the president recently, you know, requested the National Assembly for environment. We need to understand that the budget is a, a law. And you cannot, you remember also recently, the, the, um, the president did say the electoral act that was sent to him that there were mistakes. mistakes. And even, that even he, he didn't that have the power to correct, correct typographical errors. errors. Otherwise, he would be accused of doctoring the document. And so in this case, a law has been passed and money set aside under that law for a project. And if you must buy that fund, you must recourse back to the National Assembly that passed the law. There must be an amendment to that. Because law. in the and document so, itself, what is still captured in the budget is that's the why, down. That's why you cannot alter it. So what they did, let, let, let's understand this concept of constituency project. For me, I think it's an ATM for some lawmakers. And, and, and so what happens, also because you find out that we, Nigerians, really don't relate with lawmakers in terms of laws that are made. They relate with them in terms of what has he done for his people. And so they, they, they are so high on this constituency project because that's the only way for them to relate, to show the people, you know, that I'm in government. And, and, so, and then another unfortunate part of it is the fact that there is no consultation in most cases. And then, Absolutely none in this case. In most cases, and that because they sit down in Abuja, he is telling you, Oh, look, I'm, I'm loved by, by my people. The same people you did not even know that the co community you want to construct an air dam in is not motorable. motorable. And you, you know that's and you don't know. And, and you don't know. These are the same community you say you are so loved, and you don't know that the road, the place is not motorable, and it was going to be difficult for equipment to move into this place. And, you and then you the sat down. Deji, it was it's very convenient for them. Go around, almost all of the constituency project is uh, what do you call it, overhead tanks, and they tell you, oh, solar power, the uh, 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 water scheme. And in some of these cases, you hear them talk about 20 
water, water scheme. And in actual sense, you find out that some are non-existent. And that's why it's, I tell you, wait for eternity for them to show you this water scheme that they are talking about. They are non-existent. Because constituency fund is a slush fund for these people. And so you look for this community already had an head dam. And I am sure he's very much aware that it's an head dam in existence. And so you just use that also as a way of, you know, siphoning funds from, you know, the budget, you want to construct an head dam, knowing fully whether the place is not tolerable, knowing fully whether also that and there's then, already an existing head dam. Head dam and then that fund, they never also expected that because the place is not tolerable, like one of your reporters said, Completely that somebody would go there, a pressman would go there someday to go find out. And so now that you've found out, they'll tell you, oh, what actually happened was after we did all of this, we discovered that we can't really do that job, and so we took the fund somewhere else. Too. And how come the same community that was supposed to benefit from the head dam all of a sudden did not benefit from the same project that they, you diverted it from? Exactly. Oh, and, and okay, that, that's why I want you to come in. I mean, he said, the lawmaker said, you know, of course, he had to do rural water scheme. But it, it's, it's surprising that even Kwaku itself, where the head dam was originally supposed to be sited, did not benefit from the water scheme. There's but, no, no solar power borehole water scheme there, courtesy of Angulu, in that community. Kwaku has been shortchanged as it is. And it's a very sad story what we, what we saw. You know, the entire community. It's unbelievable that you have that kind of community in the FCT. The federal capital, Nigeria's federal capital territory in the first place. And then there's an opportunity to improve that situation, to better the lives of the people. And it is put in the budget under the name of that community. community. So it is not only an injustice to that community. It is also, like he noted, a breach of the law. Then it is also uh, a betrayer of that representation Trust. function that the lawmaker has to the people of Kwaku. The man, the chief says he didn't see, he has not seen the lawmaker just after, before the elections. That was when they saw, and after then he has never come to, not even as the chief of the community, some place of the people themselves. So you see, there is that disconnect, you know, and until we are able to bridge that gap through projects and investigations like this, this kind of impunity would continue. Another point we also quickly need to highlight is the fact that there is clearly a problem with the budgetary process. And this is one of the things that we're keen about at other people. We need to be able to reform the budgetary process. You see the man keeps saying, I sent a team. I sent a team. Where is the place of the MDA? Where is the place of the River Basin Development Authority? Yeah, Are they in agreement with him to breach the law with respect to the environment that has not been approved? What is the role that they have played? Who is supposed to send a team? Who is supposed to have done an, a feasibility study, yeah. project management? You know how these things are. But you see, from what we are made to believe, or what we are made to see is that, okay, look, like he said, I must quickly also make the point, too, that there are some lawmakers who actually do a fine piece of work for yeah, the constitution the you, you. But you see, this is just like a slush fund for some of them. Otherwise, there is no reason why, from all of his narrative, he doesn't even talk about the MD. It seems like this is my personal project. project. I am doing these people a favor. I have the arbitrary, you know, uh, right. the right to decide whether I want to change it from a dam to a water scheme. But, but could, the MD, could the MDA itself have, you know, have changed it? Because uh, what, what we found out is that, indeed, he actually wrote to the MDA, and then the MDA said, it, okay. It, it, it is to fulfill your righteousness. You can even write that letter and backdate it. You know, to fulfill your righteousness. Ordinarily, what constituency project should be, you identify a project in, a, in your constituency that you want to cite, you discuss with the MDAs, and then they do a feasibility study, include because it is the budget of the MDAs. So they include that constituency project in their budget and to, for execution. You as a lawmaker that attracted that, that project, you monitor the execution. But here, what we have is the lawmaker proposed a budget well, obviously project. Obviously, it's, it's difficult to tell if he monitored any execution at all. I mean, at all. He, so he, there was he, no he didn't even go to Kwaku. He, 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 he said he sent a team. He, he never didn't came back to report to him. He didn't even go to verify He never he used did. the word that he went and the road was. He said he sent a team. A feasibility study was ordered by him. That is after the budget had been award, after, after the budget had been passed and phone said ready. And so that's when he was now doing feasibility study. Is this project feasible as we speak? 
And, and so when you send the team, the MDAs also, who are also, if let's assume they are the one that also will implement or monitor the because execution from what or release said, funds. Be, sorry, because from what he said, the MDAs did nothing. As a matter of fact, the MDAs did not even bother to go and do any feasibility study. He did it and then came to tell the MDAs, you know what, we can do this again. That's an indictment on the part. That's what um, um, okay was saying, that look, the budgeting process itself is faulty from the word Abinicho. So there's need for us to have a more transparent and robust interaction budgeting process. Who ought to execute what? Constituency project, who is executing? Who are you just do you just disburse for? We all know that what happened in most cases, the, the lawmaker nominates a contractor, they probably in most some cases over inflates the, the budget, and then you nominate a contractor who is to execute. And like we have seen in the case of Kweku, and then the law, the uh, contractor says, Look, this is not feasible. And then you sit down your own unilaterally and decide what is feasible, what you want to do with the fund. And you cannot fight corruption. In that way, you do not. No system, no government executes budget that way, where people sit down arbitrarily and decide to take funds from the budget and use them for whatever means. They, it's like you budget funds for the acquisition of cars, and then you now sit down and say, "Look, I discovered that there are enough cars already, so let's buy motorcycle." And, and so, <laughs> what? If, how much? were used to execute this water scheme, this rural water scheme. We do not know. We do not know. How much is remaining from the fund? Nobody knows. And so, 80%, so that's percent, it's, it's, 80 percent. I mean, it's contained in the budget that that project is 80 percent executed. So we're looking at um, 80 percent of the funds, funds released. released. That's funds what released. it means is that 80 percent of funds, funds released. have been yeah. released. So the presumption is that 80 percent uh, 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 project have been completed. But what usually happens, it's there are milestones. You go, as the project is uh, ongoing, you go, once you get to a milestone, a certificate of completion is issued before subsequent funds are released. But in this case, you release funds. That's where I blame the MDAs also. There must be a collaboration somewhere. Yeah, you release true. funds, and then there is no certificate of completion. There is nothing. Yeah, and then you yeah. said, and meanwhile, you said there's a water scheme somewhere. Not in tandem with the provisions of the law that you are executing. Does, does, it, big, does big it surprise you that Kweku, uh, Kwaku, for instance, didn't get any of the water scheme that he's talking about? Because if Kwaku did not get it, it, it raises serious doubt as to whether, uh, you know, as to the existence of this rural water scheme he's talking about. And if, if, if we have solar power bowls, wh whether we even have enough to, to, you know, that will be commensurate to the amount that... Well, the burden of proof is on him. Uh, the report says that he agreed to take the reporters to go see the project. And uh, on two occasions, that uh, appointment were deferred. So why? If you are on the spot on a matter as important as this, you should be the one in a hurry to want to go and clear your name. I think, I guess, we'll probably wait for him to make contacts with the reporters again to go and show this pro the, the, this project. Because otherwise, it will validate the suspicions, all of the allegations about corruption in constituency projects. And I must also make the point, the budget process again, you know, procurement is a, it's a key function of the budget process, you know. Exactly. 120 million cannot be released to any contractor without some procurement process yes. that may have involved the Bureau of Public, Public Procurement. Public. So how are these constituency projects awarded? Who are the contractors? So the way it sounds like, OK, my team, I did this, I did that. So it's like there's a whole lot of actors in the budgetary process that may have been cut off. And this is just between him, probably, and, the, and the, the, the agency. Agency. And this is so wrong. This is not what the budgetary process envisages or should entail. So these are all some of the things that would come up as these kind of discoveries and reports come up that would help to engage the budgetary process and reform it. Otherwise, these things will keep happening. Yes. And yes. the talk about fighting corruption will just be in the air without any concrete... Do you have you the know, feeling, because I get that feeling, that this is just a microcosm of uh, a larger and bigger picture of what what happens with constituency projects? Well, uh, that feeling is somewhat validated with this kind of reportage. And, you know, if he is unable to show to us where these water boreholes okay. are, and if they are actually commensurate with the amounts of money that have been released. And mark you, 80% as at the time we are talking about is what is released. There may have been more money released, money released for these projects. He may have also included it in 2017 budget and probably claimed more funds for it.
you know. So until it's able to discharge, okay, this is the project, and this you and I, you know, public, you know, objective, you know, evalu evaluation is able to prove that this is commensurate with the amount of money released. Yeah. It has questions to answer. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, so we send yeah. it to add to what he mm. said. Honorable Mumuni Jubri did allege that there were insertions. Remember the, the notorious budget padding? Mm. There were insertions. And what were these insertions? That, you know, they all agreed that to add a few constituency projects, but that so many were added. And he did, as we speak. Even him also, his office also, according to him, was allocated about 600 and something million naira. You know, some of his got 1.2 billion, you know, for constituency project. And to date, as we speak, nobody's born. Thanks to, to, but, but, to, to, but, to but, the app that key. will now enable us to give feedback. But how, how do we prevent this kind of situation from happening where a lawmaker sits down in Abuja? Um, the lawmaker, for instance, is supposed to have a constituency office in his constituency. He's supposed to be meeting with his constituents you know, at regular intervals. But he doesn't do that. He sits down in Abuja and he claims and says he knows the terrain very well and decides that this is what the people... Because even in the case of the rural water scheme, let's not forget, he did not consult the people. He did not consult anybody he, to find out they, they, if they are problem is there are it. various ways we can check all of you can checkmate all of this one the first very tall order electoral processes elect people who you can vouch for people whose antecedent you know and so if at the end of the day they, they go to the national assembly and represent you without your consent then you have opportunity to change them secondly like what we are doing now, i will tell you two things you probably will receive from him either a threat that he was going to he will go to court to clear his name and then if that doesn't work and then he now begins to make calls who he wants to come on the program to also talk about this this i i can tell you for sure that definitely you're going to get that and then this is citizens engagement fantastic that app you talk your your app is you know on, on all fours on this so that the people if you know a lot of people like the people of Kweku don't even know no. what is allocated to their yeah, community yeah, in yeah. terms of constituency project because also because if the, the people if the people knew about this, they never would have supported the idea of well, let, let, let me shock you, Deji, with another information that is that we also found out why you know putting up that project. Uh, this gentleman represents the four critical rural areas. You know, uh, communities areas in, in Abuja. Abuja. So, by that right, whatever how, however they arrived at that, this man in 2016 uh, was privileged to have allocated close to a billion naira for constituency projects. We're talking of Kwaku, just 150 million. 150 million. So, that we still have other close yes. to a billion naira allocated in his name mm -hmm. for this constituency projects, four area, key area uh, councils of Abuja. So, if we're having issues with Kwaku, Kwaku. We probably may not be having issues in other areas, but then this is raises a red flag, and it connects to what he said: yeah. citizen engagement. Exactly. This is the information. You see yes. what the lawmaker has. You go to the app. You see how much has been allocated. What is supposed to be done? Has he done it? Go on the app, and then you report back. Make your feedback. feedback. Take your pictures. Post it like you saw on that thread on Kwaku. Take your pictures and post it. People say this is a pawn. <laughs> is this 150 million naira? I didn't say that. Citizens around that area say that. So this is, you just put information in the hands of citizens on a tech tool on their mobile phones. Go and engage. And if this engagement continues, there's going to be a demand to know. Yes. And there's only a short time, you know, with which you can, for which you can run away from answering questions. You can see it's already speaking. So this demand to know will Definitely. push them to keep Definitely. talking. And somewhat, we might be able to come to a resolution. Because the question of how do we get out of this, I mean, this is because just you, one way you, you out see. Of this. You see lawmaker collect so much and then build a covert as constituency project, and you now begin to ask yourself, truly, in this modern society, will somebody actually say this is a constituency project from him? You know? So it, it, that's why the onus is on us, the citizen. And thank God for programs like this where you dissect and discuss the issues. So when the issues start coming up, I also think, and I know that, you know, some other media houses would also want to take up these issues and, and discuss them. And then the right to know. People would want to, you know, how what is my lawmaker doing in Abuja? And so how much has he collected on our behalf as constituency project? Because you hardly see them. 
you don't see them. Oh, you apart from a few. On now the elections are around the corner. You know, you see all of them trooping back home. Exactly. And so these are the questions that we would be asking them when they come back to re represent us. In 2015, you collected so and so for this project. In 2016, you collected this. In 2017, you collected that. And yet, the projects are nowhere to be found. Who did you consult? Uh, you know, so once this begins to happen, I well, think a lot of people will sit up. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. The very important issue you raised there, very important. Mm -hmm. This Kwaku project is not the only constituency project yeah. he got. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, of course, we know there are about three or four... Um, Key constituencies, key constituencies now, or key areas now. Like, exactly. So this is just for Kwaku, mm -hmm. and you also have projects for other uh, communities, of course, mm -hmm. uh, attached to his name, and we, we do not know all that. rural communities. Yes, and good. this raises a serious red flag as to um, what uh, would be the status of those uh, other projects. We just wait and see what happens. We're still waiting for Honorable Angulu. He says he's going to take us there. He's, he actually, as we said, he delegated. Um, one of his staff, one of his aides now to take us, that aide said he had been ill. Well, we're still waiting. Anytime, we'll be ready to go back. Uh, but we'll continue to stay on this and see. Um, let's just see. <laughs> we're going to see this to, to the very end. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the program once again. Uh, we'll take a short break here, but I'll be right back to give you more analyses of uh, the Kwaku constituency uh, project controversy. We have more to say on that project. Stay with us. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, to DG360. Providing clarity to issues.